Um, hey, speaking of celebrity and lonely. Oh, God. Uh, this is... The only time our segues are good are when they're completely morbid and um, uh, sad. Turns out Anthony Bourdain's texts are going to be published in a new biography revealing his grim final days, saying things like, I hate my fans, I hate being famous, I hate my job. The unauthorized biography... He can't... You can't be happy in that job. It includes... For, well, yeah, it just it just shows if you're unhappy or you're unhappy. Uh, Even money wait, won't man. fix that. It includes, it for the first time, the celebrity chef's text messages from the days leading up to his death by suicide in 2018. He reveals anguish over his career, his estranged marriage, and a troubled romantic relationship with actor Asia Argento. Asia Argento. I've never yeah. gotten that correct. Um... So what are um, basically they were maybe in an open relationship at the time or he saw her stepping out. <laughs> Am I an old timey? <laughs> Where's Joanne? Ma? She was stepping out on him. She um, was being a harlot. There, there, let's look at this graphic. Um, there was a so photo of her dancing with a French reporter. <laughs> Bourdain texted Argento after seeing the photo saying, I am okay, I'm not spiteful, I am not jealous that you've been with another man. I do not own you, you are free, as I said, as I promised, as I truly meant. But you were careless, you were reckless with my heart, my life. She responded, I can't take this. And said she'd no longer stay in the relationship due to his possessiveness. In his final... It like he was being that possessive. His final exchange with her... He wrote, is there anything I can do? To which she replied, stop busting my balls. And he replied with a simple okay and hanged himself later that day. So already the book has drawn fire oh from God. Bourdain's family, coworkers, and friends. Um, the publisher responded, with all due respect, we disagree that the material in the book contains defamatory information. We stand by our forthcoming publication. Um, but like, why? Why now? And and what is this? And who who allows that? It, That's it the seems thing. Strange to me that we're even allowed to publish his personal. It goes back text. to what we were talking about with Alan Rickman's diary. Yeah. You know, six years ago the guy dies. And now we love to we love it. celebrity. We love celebrity secrets and the salaciousness. But anyway, you have a lot more insight, I think, into Argento and her character and possibly her role in their relationship. I do. What are your thoughts? So I have a lot of thoughts here. I'm going to go backwards from the question you just guys just asked in terms of why are we seeing this now. So when he died, um, as they as they put in the article talking about this, this is from the New York Times yesterday. Um, his people, like everyone from like his bus boys to really close friends and everything, they they kind of insisted they they protected his legacy in their stories. They wouldn't talk to the press. Then right. last year, there there were two uh, documentaries, and some of them talked, and, and it kind of presented a more balance and his pain and et cetera, and, and that kind of worked. Well, this guy is now like, it's almost like, now it's the third iteration, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you make a cup of tea, it's strong the first time, the second time it's weaker, now this is the third time. So this is like the third tea bag here, right? Or yeah. the third tea bagging. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the article, it, part of it kind of disturbed me in that he said, well, you know, I didn't want to add to the kind of hagiography that we make of these stars. Uh, so I had a lot of people, they wouldn't talk to me, like all Tony's closest people. But that gave me opportunity because like the people he left behind then would talk to me. I'm like, oh, great. So you're going to get kind of like the bitter people. Yeah. But he also, you know, he was a public figure. And so we are going to write about them, and they are opening up and exploding a little bit about more about what happened with Argento. And I have written quite a lot about this. I wrote about this in 2018. So what happened is they got together. They met on his show. They fell in love very kind of publicly as he was making one of the episodes. I saw those clips. You could certainly tell. Uh, it's he, he happened fell. right away. Yeah, He fell. And this was, I guess, in 2016, 2015, 2016. And... Um, they were together, and then they he was already separated from his wife, I believe, whom with whom he had a child, a daughter. They started seeing each other. Uh, she, in the meantime, became this kind of face of Me Too. She accused Harvey Weinstein in 2017. She became one yes. of the big faces of Me Too. And Tony Bourdain, like, came out extremely publicly sticking. Like, yes, my woman, my this, mm. my that. Meanwhile, there's this guy, Jimmy Bennett, who was a child actor, Aja Argento had it, had directed him in The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things. This It's a long story. I was involved in it. I interviewed them when he was seven years old. Anyway, when he was 17, 
She slept with him. She was 37. He was 17. This is now happening. I, I love her reaction. This is happening while Asha Argento is the face of Me Too with Rose McGowan. Okay? So what happens? Jimmy Bennett's like, you got to pay me off. I want $3.5 million. Anthony Bourdain is out here defending my woman for being a victim. Meanwhile, under the table, he's giving Jimmy Bennett $380,000. Oh okay? Yeah, so Jimmy Bennett's a con man. The dude was 17. He, uh, every 17-year-old should be so lucky. Can find there is a difference. If, if Steve wants to find the post-coital shots of Aja Argento and Jimmy Bennett in bed in Southern California, well, they fucked. They were there. Really? He, he really, he, they took them together. They took their Why own selfies. Why would you leave a paper trail? And so you can see, <laughs> Jimmy is not looking very upset. In the meantime, Of course he's not! Luckiest kid in the world! Right. In the meantime, in the article, you find out, and I knew this, you know, uh, ben, I mean, uh, uh, Bourdain was supporting Argento and her two children and sometimes her friends, kind of shades of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Yes. And now... He's getting, I guess, increasingly depressed. They're not getting along so well. She's pathologically jealous of the fact that he has an ex-wife who's still married to, but they're not together, and a daughter searches his social media, screaming at him if he's in a picture with his daughter on Father's Day. Aja Argento is a fucking succubus, okay? In any case... She, hi, she really is. No, no, no. She is. But meanwhile, she's a hero. She is the person that we should venerate as being the hero. There they are. Wow. He's 17, she's 37, whatever. I don't care so much about that. But I do care that later she's going to be the hero because she's being abused. Meanwhile, you know with Harvey Weinstein, Crazy. Yes, maybe their first encounter was not consensual. She slept with him for 10 years after that. So just, you know. I forgot about know. that. Okay. So in any case. Interesting. They're kind of separating. Bourdain is in love with she's her. Sorted. He's not, she's not blah, 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 blah. They're kind of separate. He's incre increasingly depressed. She goes out with this guy and stays at the hotel where she and Bourdain used to stay and then makes sure like the paparazzi sees her with her new guy. And Bourdain was very, he was very upset and distressed by this. And you, he's older than she is. He tries to write to her. He's like, you were careless with my heart. Yeah. And she's like, get the fuck off my nut, right? Now, I like look, look. There's some, bad, there's some stuff about her I like. This is, not, <laughs> this is not to say everybody makes their own decisions, right? But to then, then he kills himself. And she comes out, he was my heart, he was my love, mm. he was my life. And they're still trying to present her as a hero. I wrote about her in 2018, and I was like, this is not the person that should be the fucking figurehead of Me Too. Right. And people are like, that's because you're a rape apologist, Nancy. I'm like, really? Jesus Christ. Okay, mm. well, then what is this going on? What is yeah. the paying off of this Jimmy Bennett? Why do you want her? Anyway, she's kind of faded. She's she's not really around anymore. She's kind of living in well, how, We knew her for her act. Was she director to his acting? Her father was um, the famous uh, Italian horror director something Argento. I don't remember his first name. She has directed some some films. Okay. She's acted in some films. I don't really know her career. But she was kind of considered, you know, very cool. She's very Italian. She's very beautiful. You know, she's got the thing that, you know, I smoke a lot and everything. You know, she's... Uh, if you wanted to play a little hot, nude right? for thought at home, it's a real easy Google search with her. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Oh, is that right? You're gonna, oh, you're oh gonna, a lot of nude scenes. A lot of, lot, of lot, of, okay. lot of very Italian full frontal. Her name yeah. just sounds like Asiago Sargento. It, she's uh, just a bunch of cheeses. That's exactly, that's all I think. I can't pronounce it correctly because of that. Yes. Maybe that's what Bourdain really liked. She was anyway, a snack. He, was, he loved, you know, the, the punk aspect, edgy, uh, you know, yes. art house films he type of lifestyle. Too. Like, she, that is, sense. she is everything that he would want. And druggy you know, and, and loose yes. and, you know, these kind of citizens of the world, they're beautiful, they're wearing black leather citizen and everything. 